Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to find all the inverses associated with the function f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 8. Before we do that, I'd like to just review a couple of facts about inverse functions. Um, some things about inverse functions. First of all, a function must be a one-to-one -one function in order to have an inverse. This means that it has to pass the horizontal line test. So for example, something like the graph of say x cubed, y equals x cubed is a one-to-one -one function because if you draw any horizontal line anywhere through the graph, you can only hit one point. So x cubed would have an inverse, but on the other hand, um, x squared would not. This is not a one-to-one -one function because it fails the horizontal line test. It hits two points. The reason that's a requirement is because of the way we find an inverse function. An inverse function reverses all operations. It's like switching all the x and y coordinates. The graph of an inverse function will actually be a mirror image across the line y equals x as a result. Let's pretend for a moment that we thought that, all right, so since the point negative 2, 4 and the point 2, 4 both go through the same, have the same um, y coordinate for two different x coordinates. That's why this fails the horizontal line test. But more than that, if we switch the x and y coordinates, then um, our new graph, which would be our proposed inverse, is going to go through the point uh, 4, 2 and the point 4, negative 2. It would still go through 0, 0, because when you switch those coordinates, you get the same graph. And our proposed inverse function would look like this in red. Well, the problem is that um, it's not a function because it now fails the vertical line test. So that's why functions must be one-to-one -to, -one to have an inverse. Now, sometimes we still want to talk about the inverse of a function, even though technically it doesn't have an inverse, but there's a very quick fix for this. Uh, what we can do is we can break apart the function into pieces many times in order to get a one-to-one -one function. This is called restricting the domain. So for example, in um, the graph of x squared, if I erase half of the graph, the half to the right of the vertex, then it suddenly passes the horizontal line test. And when we switch all the x and y coordinates, we only get half of the, um, the sideways parabola we had a minute ago, and that actually is a function. This is the function f of x equals x squared, uh, restricted to the values of x less than or equal to zero, and f inverse would be the reflected square root of x. And the restriction on this would be that um, we could only have uh, x values greater than or equal to zero. The y values notice are all less than or equal to zero because when we switched the x's and the y's that we flipped the domain and range. On the original function f the range was greater than or equal to zero. So in any case we get the inverse function but just a part of it and we could do the same thing with the right side of the original parabola we could find its inverse separately. So sometimes we'll restrict the domain of a function in order to find the inverse of part of the function. So let's look back at our problem. We were asked to find all the inverses associated with the following function and state their domains. So they're giving us a function which again is a parabola. Just by the nature of being a parabola, we know it's U-shaped, it's going to fail the horizontal line test, it's not one-to-one. -one. So we will have to restrict the domain and find um, pieces of the function and then their inverses. Now we have a hint given to us here. It says complete the square first. So the reason for that is a, a function that's a parabola, a quadratic function, can be given to us in the standard form as it is here, ax squared plus bx plus c. But recall that it can also be, uh, if we use completing the square, it can be rewritten into the form a times x minus h 
squared plus k, which is called vertex form because the h and the k are the vertex of the function. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start by applying the technique of completing the square. And the way that you do that when you have a quadratic function is, um, first of all, you would factor out any coefficient of the x squared, but we don't have one, so we don't need to do that. And then you would try and find a number you can add to this portion of the function that would make it a perfect square. But we can't lose that plus 8. It's still there. And we, so we're also going to subtract that same value, so we're not actually changing the overall value of the function. How we find that value is always the same. You're going to take half the coefficient of x, which in this case is negative 4, and you're going to square that number. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. You're going to square negative 2, which gives you positive 4, to get the number that we're going to add and subtract from the function. So, so we're going to factor this into x minus 2 squared and then plus 8 minus 4, so plus 4. So now we have um, the vertex form. The vertex in this case is going to be the point 2, 4. So let's get a nice quick graph of this function. So you can see that it is not a one-to-one -one function, but if we break it apart at the vertex, then the left side is one-to-one -one and the right side is one-to-one. -one. So I'm actually going to break f up into two pieces. We're going to have f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 4 when x is greater than or equal to 2 in black. And then we have f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 4 for the x values less than or equal to 2 on the left in blue. So we can find the inverse of each of these by switching the x and y coordinates and solving for y. Be sure to continue writing the restriction um, that will guide us as we go. So I've switched the x and y's and now I'm going to solve for y in the equation. We're going to subtract 4 over to one side and that leaves y minus 2 squared on the other side. Keeping in mind y has to be greater than or equal to 2. Use the square root property. Well, that means y minus 2 must be plus or minus the square root of x minus 4. Okay, then I'm going to add 2 over to the other side. So I have 2 plus or minus the square root of x minus 4 is equal to y. But remember, y has to be greater than or equal to 2. So the only way that can happen is if we only add to 2. So we can't have the subtraction there. So this, the only piece of this we will use is the piece where 2 plus the square root of x minus 4 is equal to y, not the minus, which would give us a number less than 2. That is where the y being greater than or equal to 2 is important in this process. And now I'm going to give him the name of the inverse. So this means that f inverse of x is equal to um, the square root of x minus 4 plus 2. Now using transformations, you might recall that the square root of x looks like this half of a parabola going up and to the right. So the square root of x minus 4 plus 2 is shifted to the right 4 and up 2 and looks like this red graph here. Let's go ahead and graph this proposed f inverse on our uh, same set of coordinates as f and see how they compare. So I've put that graph of f inverse onto the xy coordinate system where we started and you can see that um, originally all the x values of this black portion of the parabola were greater than or equal to 2 and y was greater than or equal to 4. For f inverse it's reversed. The y values are all greater than or equal to 2 and the x values are greater than or equal to 4. And also you can see that um, it's a mirror image of the black portion of the graph across the line y equals x. But this isn't the only inverse associated with the original function because we have the blue side of the original function f where the x values were less than or equal to 2 and the y values are greater than or equal to 4. And we'd like to see what inverse that's associated with. So coming back to the blue version of our function where x is restricted to being less than or equal to 2 
If we uh, let, replace f of x with y and switch the x and y values, all the steps are the same as they were in the, the black half of the function until we get down to this point where we've applied the square root property and moved the two over to the other side. Then we see that this time, since we want y values less than or equal to two, we have to pick only the minus version, two minus the square root of x minus four equals y. I don't need to write y less than or equal to two anymore because it's going to automatically be less than or equal to two if we subtract from two a positive value. So our inverse this time looks like negative square root of x minus four plus two. That's normally how we write it to, to see the transformations of the square root. And what this is, is a reflection, a vertical reflection. So it's gonna flip upside down. And then we still have this shift to the right four units and up two. So let's see what that looks like. So when we flip the um, square root function over, shift it up two into the right four, we end up with this graph in red. So let's go ahead and put that graph up on the other one. So we can see that this red graph is the mirror image of the blue side of the x squared function. It goes through four, two instead of two, four. So we can see that the red graph is a reflection of the blue side of the x squared function across the line y equals x with all the x and y coordinates switched. For example, instead of zero, eight, it goes through eight, zero. So this is another inverse function that is associated with the original function. And for this one, the y values are less than or equal to two, and the x values are greater than or equal to four. You see how the domain and range have switched as they should for an inverse function. So we have our two uh, inverse functions that are associated with our original function f. f inverse of x equals square root of x minus four plus two with a domain of four to infinity and a range of two to infinity. And f inverse of x equals negative square root of x minus four plus two with a domain of four to infinity and a range of negative infinity to negative two. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. Every time you give it a thumbs up, that helps other students to find the video.